Illinois TV South by Southwest film interview marathon. I'm here with Kim and the American Fable people. Go ahead and introduce yourselves from uh, over there to over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Kishori Rajan. I'm the producer of the movie. I'm Anne Hamilton. I'm the director and writer of the movie. And I, I'm Brad Pitt. Nice to meet you. <laughs> My name is Richard Schiff. I'm an actor in the movie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gavin McIntosh, and I play Martin. I'm Peyton Kennedy, and I play Giddy. Nice. Okay, so unfortunately, there isn't much about the film other than I know this is an American suburban folktale. I. It's a rural folktale. Rural folktale, yeah. Um, it takes place in a grain farm of some sort. Yeah, so it takes place in the 1980s during the farm crisis, and it's all about this girl, played by Peyton, who finds out that her dad's hiding a man in their silo, played by Richard. Um, and, uh, and it's all about that summer where she tries to figure out why he's there and if she should tell her parents. And Gavin plays her brother, who is a very interesting character in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Like I said, folktale. So tell us a little bit more about your influences about that, because I, some of the photos I've seen are like there's the black figure in the crow feathers. She looks very in she or he I don't know. They look very interesting, and I mean it's just some of the visual is look great. Oh, thank you. Um, so I think Peyton can jump here a little bit about the story, the the fairy tale aspect. But the dark rider is a sort of woman on a dark horse that Giddy's character sees throughout the movie at different points when things are getting really dark and you're not sure if it's real or if it's not. Yeah, um, I think in between the movie, the line, there's a thin line between what's real and what's not and as Anne said, like the line fades throughout the movie and the magical aspect follows my character throughout the whole film which is the dark rider and the corn stalks and things like that. And, yeah. yeah. It sounds like fun. I don't want to spoil too much of the movie because I know you haven't released yet. But it looks, just from what I've she, seen, she looks did amazing. It. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> she, she did it. She's the one. Well, maybe. We don't know yet. Just kidding. So, all right. Um, they look like y'all had fun, though, on set, just the way y'all stand here together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, you're her brother. You're the gentleman in the silo. How long were you in that silo for? <laughs> Um, a long time. <laughs> uh oh. Um, it, uh, it was uh, it was a built silo, though, right? It was yeah. a set. Yeah, we had an outside shot of the silo, and then the um, production design made an inside silo that we filmed inside. Nice. In a, in a studio. Yeah, but I think in, in real time and story time, I mean, I was there for uh, weeks and weeks, like yeah. a long, long time. Yeah. Nice. Well, one thing that I wanted to ask is like. Why that setting? Like, what spoke to you so much about that setting versus, say, you know, a more modern time or a time that was further in the past? Like, what made you settle on that specific point in history? Well, I'm from the Midwest, and I grew up during the 80s. And I, like, when I think about the most scary places on Earth and the most beautiful places, I think about cornfields, because that's where I grew up. Um, <laughs> and I really wanted to tell a story about the Midwest back then because it's changed so much in the past 30 years. Uh, it used to be a place where farmers really were the main source of income and, and we lost a lot of farmers during the farm crisis. We went from having about 7 million farmers in the U.S. to having about 2 million. And so I really wanted to tell a story against that backdrop, but I also love scary stories. And I loved, I, lo I wanted to have a female protagonist who was a girl who kind of reminded me of me as a kid. And, and so I just, you know, it was a natural story for the first feature I was going to direct. So it sounds like, like it was more like the past, your own history is what brought this into light versus, you know, this is a spot in history that I think would fit. I think it was both. both. I mean, you're always looking for that kind of synergy of like what you want to do and what the world needs, and mm -hmm. and so. And I also had this image of of basically Richard's character meeting Giddy's character in a sort of you know in a scene that didn't make any sense in my head. And I had that for like three or four years, and mm -hmm. finally, I, I wrote the story to show how they met. Um, so yeah. it sounds familiar. I mean, your experience on set though, you're a younger actress. I mean. Was it scary at all for you, or were they really nice to you? No, the, the, the crew and the cast, they were incredibly um, supporting, and it was really amazing. And as a child actor, I really want to be seen as a colleague to the actors and the crew, and not as just a little kid on set. Yeah. That's funny, because I want to be seen as a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling you were the troublemaker on the set. <laughs> I like the I don't want to tell anybody. No. <laughs> With the, the serious dark character, you know, as we would portray it as viewers, there, it's exactly how you want us to see it. But I'm sure behind the set there was like some goofy kind of silly stuff that's going on that would just have like taken the, the path off the movie. So <laughs> is there like an unusual or strange story that happened during the filming? Well, Gavin stole cookies a lot. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the one from the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a time you caught me dancing in my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing all the strange stuff centers around you guys. <laughs> it sort of happens like that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we had a we had a uh, most of our crew come from Chicago because we were in Northwest Illinois and we were all in this very 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 remote town. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really had to, we were just all bonded in a way that I think yeah. you normally don't have when you go home at night to your normal lives. Yeah. Um, and we had a, an amazing support system from the towns where we shot, uh, which is Kent and Stockton and uh, Pearl City in Iowa, and I'm sorry, <laughs> Illinois. Um, and they lent us, you know, equipment, their homes. They were, so at our rap party, the entire town showed up yeah. for it. It was, so I think, <laughs> the blurred lines between who's crew, who's cast, who's, you know, this family of people in yeah. these communities, it got blurred in a, in a really nice way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it did. I would just show up with, like, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, one thing I just wanted to add is, like, being there, like, on, on the film and on set, it's, like, a lot of sets you're, you're on, like, maybe Warner Brothers or Sony, you're in, like, a studio, and there we were really there. And we were in the Midwest, and we were in there with people who were farmers, like they are, like, in the movie, and we were just, you know, interacting with people in the community and that really made the whole movie sort of come to life. Yeah, I think it was really awesome because the town was so small. There was actually a, a sign in Kent that said people um, 74 <laughs> and, um, and because they were all from the same um, the same farming um, background it was really like usually when you're on a set and you go home there's a whole bunch of different kind of people and you can go but in a town like this like you're you're with the same people always and that's really what bonded us I think. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, you play brother and sister on screen. I mean, there have got to be shenanigans relating back to that. But I mean, going back, did you notice an impact in the community? Because I know the small farming communities, I grew up in a suburban area here in Austin, so I got the chance to go out into the more rural areas. The ranch country here in Texas, we don't really have much farming. <clears throat> Was Were they appreciating what you were doing for that... Uh, that moment in time that you're talking about, or? Well, yeah, I mean, everybody knew, every every single farmer knew about somebody who had killed themselves because they had lost their farm. Oh, and so I think they really appreciated having a story about it, and there aren't any stories about it being told, and it really affects us today, even. Mm-hmm. The way we, we, you know, consume food and the way we, you know, the way the Midwest has sort of changed politically over that time period. Um, mm-hmm. But also, I, you know, we, we ended up giving a lot of business to the community, and, and like our caterers were able to buy a new store because of it, and like it was really wonderful to be able to give back to mm-hmm. like where I'm from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, okay. I was, I was going to actually say we're about out of time. So if anybody's interested, uh, at least locally, since we are live, where could they see the screeners, the actual uh, show itself? And then if they are from the internet, since we're recording and putting this on live later, where can they find you? Okay. Go so. Uh, they can find information about us at uh, AmericanFable.com, and then we have a Facebook page and a Twitter page, and we are very active on that for update, for any updates on screenings. And then Our screenings are on Sunday at 5.30 p.m. at the Lamar, on mm-hmm. Tuesday at 9.15 p.m. at the Alamo Ritz, and at Thursday, and two more, Thursday um, at 8.30 at the Alamo Slaughter, and then at, on Friday at 6.15 at the Alamo Lamar again. So that please is. come see us. Yeah. We would love to see you. And the Sunday is the premiere. Yeah, nice. Sunday. Nice. It's, Wish you the best of luck on your premiere. Thank you so much for having us, Thanks or for being us. here, not having right. us. <laughs> we're having Thanks for having us. Strike yeah. 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 <laughs> it's getting to the end of my filming day. I'm like, <laughs> it's really thank, fun us, thank you so much. I mean, we'll be back in a few minutes with more films. No, I would be not. the sniper in the back, making sure you all died, and I could get the loot myself. That, that's well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you and I would just be in the back going, let them kill themselves. Okay, now finish off the rest, and let's go clean up. <laughs>